In this video, I'm going to be explaining exactly what's involved in a heat pump installation on this 1980s property. From initial survey all the way through to completion, we're going to be explaining each step of the journey. I'm heading to the property now, which is based in Sunderland. But before we go to any heat pump survey, we usually like to have a good conversation with the customer just to find out exactly what they expect from a heat pump installation and also find out what the current heating system is and how they like to operate the system. We also like to have a look on Google Maps just to make sure there's a suitable location around the property to site the heat pump. We like to check the energy performance certificate if there is one. This will let us check the insulation levels of the house and also the square meterage. And it allows us to roughly guess what size heat pump we're going to need and give the customers a rough quote before we even go. So the first thing that I like to do during a heat pump survey is have a look around the house, check what the existing heating system is and also have a look outside the property to make sure there's enough room for the external unit and also inside the property to make sure there's enough room for the cylinder. The biggest problem we're going to have on this job is finding a good location for the heat pump. So the customer doesn't want anything on show at the front of the property, the side of the property is too narrow and the rear of the property is a teak garden so that's not going to be suitable for it. There's only one place that I can see that's going to be a good location and it's going to be on top of the extension roof. It does mean that we're going to have to wall mount the unit on the other side of the wall of the bedrooms but the new valent units that we use are extremely quiet so I don't think it's going to be any problem. One of the main considerations you need to think about when siting the valent units is the fact that it uses R290 refrigerant. So because of this you need to have certain clearances away from openings in the building. So on this job I've had a look at the measurement between the two bedroom windows and there's just enough space there to fit the heat pump. I was a little bit worried about the roof lantern that's in front of the unit but because the roof lantern's on an upstand and the R290 is heavier than air the R290 would just fall to the ground and disperse around the lantern. Another slight issue that we've got is the service and maintenance into the unit. So I've spoke to Valent and they're happy with it being there. Most of the serviceable parts are in the side of the unit so they don't have to be directly in front of it. But if we ever did need to be in front, we could construct a platform with some scaffold and some boards. So we should get around that issue as well. Last thing we need to do is a sound assessment. So all we need to do is take a measurement from the heat pump to the nearest habitable window of a neighboring property. So in this case, it will be next door's bedroom. So I've measured from the top of the unit to the bedroom. We do a few calculations, but because the valent heat pumps are so quiet, it's not gonna be a problem at all. The most important part of any heat pump installation is the heat loss survey. To do this, we need to go around each room in the property. We need to measure all the lengths of the walls, the heights of the ceilings, the size of the windows and doors, and also try and work out what the insulation levels of the walls are if they've got cavity wall insulation or if it's got loft insulation and how much. From there, we can find out what each individual room's heat loss is, so we can size the radiators and we can also put all the rooms together to find out the whole house requirements so we can size our heat pump. To do this, we use a piece of software called Heat Engineer. So this piece of software is really good because it helps us work out what size radiator we're going to need depending on the floor temperature we choose. With heat pumps, the lower the floor temperature, the more efficient the unit will be. So we always like to aim for a 40 to 45 degree floor temperature to get higher efficiencies out of the unit. It also helps us work out what pipe sizes we're going to need and also the pressure loss across the system to make sure the circulation pump's big enough. There's two bedrooms in this property where it's going to be really difficult to change the size of the radiators. So I've done the calculations and all we need to do is add another panel to each radiator. So we're going to be changing single radiators to type 21s and that'll allow us to have a floor temperature of 40 degrees. At that temperature, the unit should be working at 413% efficient. The downstairs in this property is run off underfloor heating, so we don't need to change anything there. I've checked all the pipe centers and it'll be perfect for 40 degree temperatures. The way this heating system is currently set up is so it's all zoned. So we've got a zone for the living room, dining room, we've got zones for the bedroom and another one for the hallway as well. So when it comes to heat pumps, they don't work as well when it's zoned, it really destroys the efficiency. So we're going to be removing all zoner from the system. We're going to be removing the pump and the blending valve from the underfloor heating and taking all the zone valves off the top of the underfloor heating as well. That way the heat pump and the weather compensation can control the whole system and it should be much more efficient. So the last few checks that we need to do inside the property is just checking the incoming water just to make sure the pressure and the flow rate's high enough for the new invented cylinder. We need to do a few checks on the electrical side as well just to see what the cutout rating is on the main fuse and also check what the total demand is on the distribution board at the moment. Before we leave the survey we'd like to explain to the customer exactly what's involved in the job. So we take them around the property and explain all the carpets that need to be lifted and what the pipe runs are going to be. All the radiator pipework on this job is currently 15 and 22 mil copper pipework so we don't need to upgrade any of that. The main disruption is going to be on the hallway landing where the current boiler is. 
So we're going to be putting the new cylinder in there. So we'll be running the primaries from the heat pump up into the loft and then down into the cylinder cupboard. I'm back in the office now where I've been finalising the last few details for this job. So I've just sent the customer over an email with the full heat loss report in, which details what size radiators we recommend and what the target flow temperature is going to be of the system. She's also got the sound assessment and quote that details all the materials and controls that we're going to be using on this job. If the customer does want to go ahead, the next stage is to apply for the boiler upgrade scheme voucher. This voucher gives the customer £5,000 off the installation of an air source heat pump as long as they've got a valid energy performance certificate and there's no recommendations on the cavity wall or loft insulation. For some installations you might have to get planning permission before the work, but that depends on the size of the unit you're installing it and also the location. You also have to notify the Energy Network Association. Sometimes this must be done before the installation, but in some cases it can be done after. I'm back at the property today where the installation's almost complete. All we've got left to do is a little bit of insulation in the cylinder cupboard, give the customer the handover pack and also show them how to use the system. For this installation we've installed a 5 kilowatt Valent Aerotherm Plus unit with 150 litre unvented cylinder, the sensor comfort controls and the sensor neck gateway so the whole system can be controlled remotely from a smartphone. Being an MCS registered company there's quite a few documents that we need to give to the customer. This includes the MCS certificate, a copy of the invoice, insurance backed warranty details, heat loss calculations, the radiator design temperatures, the maintenance requirements and manufacturer's instructions compliance certificates, building regulation certificates, gas safe certificate for the old boiler that was removed, sound assessment, DNO approval and manufacturer's warranty information. I hope you've enjoyed this video. We're going to be heading back to this job a few times during the year just to see what the efficiency is like in different weather conditions and see if the efficiency does match up to the manufacturer's data sheet. If you're thinking about having a heat pump installed in your home and have any questions or need any advice, please visit our website or call 0191 548 7171 and one of our team will be happy to help.